Hello everyone. So in the last video, we have discussed about the LDA part. We have discussed at this particular slide, right? So main objective of LDA is to perform a is to perform a dimensionality reduction. So I want to reduce the two dimensional data points into one dimensional thing. Okay. So how to do that? So there are few steps. Like what we have discussed in the case of a PCA, similar type of things are there in the case of LDA as well. Okay, same thing. So, so the first step is to find out the class mean. Okay, so of dependent variable, I can say. So, in the case of binary classification problem, what we have discussed, we need to first find out the mean for red class and then mean for blue class as well okay and we are representing it by mu like this okay mu let's say mu and how to find out this particular thing it is simple one by n that is number of data points summation of those data points for both the features okay and where x belong to that particular uh, class let, let's say a red class here okay so this is how we can find out the mean okay now what about the second step once we have find out the mean of the variable then the next step is to find out the covariance matrix okay covariance matrix of class variable same thing we used to do in the case of pca as well right but why we are finding out the covariance okay so here you can see covariance let's say represent by s1 that is the, nothing but the summation of x minus u1 for the class 1, right, into x minus mu1 transpose for x belong to that particular class, okay. This is what the covariance matrix is. Now, what about the third step? Once we have found out the covariance matrix, then we need to find out the within class, within class scatter matrix, okay. So within class scatter matrix, so we already discussed what is this within class is, but what is this within class scatter matrix, how to find out that, uh, we'll discuss that also, that is nothing but this represented by a SW and that is basically summation of S1 plus S2, so summation of the covariance of both the classes, that is how we can find out the within class scatter matrix. Then the next step is to find out the between class scatter matrix now. Between class scatter matrix. Let's say represent by SB here. Okay. That is nothing but the mu1 minus mu2 into mu1 minus mu2 transpose. That is between class scatter matrix. And once we have found out the Within class and between class matrix, the next step is to find out the eigenvalues. So we need to compute the eigenvalues and an eigenvector. So first we need to find out the eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors. Okay. But how to find out for which matrix? But how to find out the eigenvalues and eigen vectors but for which matrix for so we will get the matrix by using sw and s a b here that is within class matrix and a between class scatter matrix now once we have found out the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors or now once we have found out the eigenvalues and eigen uh, corresponding eigenvector you just need to simply multiply the eigenvector with the original data to get the lda right so here we can say i can after the next step is obtain lda obtain lda by taking the dot product right so by simply taking the dot product of this particular vector what we got dot product of eigen vector and the original data so what we have done in the case of pca same thing here as well okay original data so in this way we can reduce the dimensionality from 2d to 1d okay so here i am talking about the binary classification thing okay but here i am talking about the 
binary classification thing okay binary uh, classification because we have just two features and if we find out the eigen values and eigen vectors we can take the maximum of that highest of that and we can simply find out the eigen vectors corresponding to that but what happens in the case of k classes for example okay or i have c number of classes in that scenario after the step 5 so i'm writing this after step 5 in the case of k classification problem let's say k classification problem we need to sort the values okay we need to sort the eigen values sort the eigen values in descending order and we need to select the top k values for example i want to convert for example i want to reduce the dimension from 3d to 2d so in that case my k will be 2 so i'm going to select the top two eigen values suppose i got a uh, three eigen values and three corresponding vectors to that so i'm going to select two eigen values out of these three and those two will be the highest eigen values from the three okay so in this way we can reduce the 3d to 2d so but for that purpose we need to sort the eigen values or simply take the top uh, k values for example i got the eigen values as lambda equals to 8 lambda 2 equals to 3 and lambda 3 equals to 6.5 like this so in this scenario you need to consider lambda 1 and lambda 3 so find out the eigen vectors corresponding to that so both the eigen vectors and then you can take the simply uh, dot product with the original data so that you can get two dimensional thing okay so this is what we have to do in the case of lda i hope you understand the step what we have discussed but how to find out this within class and between class let's i discuss that also okay so first we need to find out the covariance matrix that is s1 and by using this particular covariance matrix we can find out the within class and between class scalar matrix okay so let's try to discuss one example and that will be much clearer to you by using this particular steps only so here you can see we need to compute the linear discriminant projection for the following two dimensional data set here okay so here you can say x1 equals to x1 comma x2 so we have a two axis x1 and x2 here like this so 4 1 2 4 so here we can see the data point corresponding to that particular x1 and if you see x2 these are the data point corresponding to x2 so this is basically a x2 this is basically a x1 okay now i want to convert this 2d to 1d i want to project this particular thing into this particular vector that is w l d a so i want to project that and i need to find out this particular vector right so how to find out that so here you can see first i need to find out the mean so i have found out the mean mu1 and mu2 for both the class x1 and x2 so here you can see 3 3 means what 4 plus 2 plus 2 that is 8 11 then 4 15 so 15 divided by 5 that is basically a 3 for this x1 similarly for x2 for mu2 as well corresponding to x2 that will be 9 plus 6 15 9 that is 24 8 32 10 that is uh, 42 42 divided by 5 that is nothing but 8.4 so that is what 8.4 it is similarly for x2 as well so in this way i can find out the mu1 and mu2 for x1 and x2 okay i hope this is clear how to find out mu1 and mu2 now once you have found out the mu1 and mu2 you need to find out the covariance matrix corresponding to this particular data set okay for x1 and x2 and how to do that we already done this in the pca part okay if you if you remember we have done this in the case of pca so please watch that particular lecture so once we have found out the mean then we have found out the covariance matrix for x1 and x2 that is s1 and s2 okay now once i got the covariance matrix i have found out the between class scatter matrix and within class scatter matrix so within class scatter matrix is nothing but at s1 plus s2 so if you observe first i need to find out the covariance matrix for x1 x2 and the 
within class matrix is nothing but the summation of s1 and s2 so that is nothing but 0.8 plus 1.4 so 2.64 here you can see minus 0.4 plus minus 0.04 that will be minus 0.044 simple we have done the addition of these two matrices that is s1 plus s2 so in this way i got this sw now what about this sb between class scatter matrix so for that purpose we have used uh, this thing mu1 minus mu2 into transpose of mu1 minus mu2 right so if you see mu1 minus mu2 so that is what it is so if i say mu1 minus mu2 what i am going to get here 3 then 3.6 minus 8.4 and 7.6 that is nothing but 3 minus 8.4 is what minus 5.4 and 3.6 minus 7.6 is what minus 4.0 right so this is the mu1 minus mu2 and what we have to do minus 5.4 minus 4.0 this is mu1 minus mu2 into the transpose of this this is what how we can find out the between class scalar matrix right transpose of this that is nothing but like this minus 5.4 and here minus 4.0 now simply take the product right so if you observe this 5.4 into 5.4 so i am just doing it here 5.4 into 5.4 so it will be around 29.016 yes 5.4 into 4 so that will be a uh, 21.6 right now 4.0 into 5.1 same thing 21.6 and 4 into 4 that is 16 right so if you observe i got the between scatter matrix okay i hope you understand how we got this sw and sb very very important so in the gate exam you can expect a one mark question from this either based on the concept what we have discussed so that is what you can expect one mark question or you can expect two mark question that is basically to find out sw and sb as well so they can directly give the this data set and try to find out the matrix that is within or between class scatter matrix so this is also possible okay so you should know how to find out uh, this particular thing simple one first you need to find out the mean for both the class second try to find out the covariance matrix for both the class and the third step is that for within simply s1 plus s2 and for between this mu1 minus mu2 because we already find it out the mean and into mu1 minus mu2 transpose right so in this way you will get sw and sb so once i got sw and sb okay so i think this is clear now how we got s1 has to mu1 mu2 sw sb so we got all these things we got we got all the matrices now the next step is to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors using these two matrices how to do that here you can see the, the lda projection is then obtained as a solution of generalized eigenvalue problem so this expression you have to consider okay this expression here if you see what is written inverse of this within cluster matrix into sv into uh, v into lambda into v okay so this is the expression that we need to consider and for finding out the eigenvalues this is what we have to consider so simply a inverse of this one into sv minus lambda i so just try to find out the values of lambda so that will be my eigenvalues and for this scenario i got lambda equals to 15.65 so once you got the eigenvalues you need to find out the corresponding eigenvectors i hope everyone knows how to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors right once you got the eigenvectors you just need to simply multiply with the original data that's it right now i want to find out the eigenvector here v1 and v2 so this is what my v1 and v2 is okay so i will get this eigenvectors as this particular thing so this is what my eigenvector is v1 and v2 so 0.91 and 0.39 now if you want to find out uh, this particular data point simply take a cross product of this data point with this data point that's it you will get the so you will get the data point for the this particular vector or directly you can find out like this now what is this particular thing w star so this is what we are going to discuss in the next video in this video we have discussed what are the steps involved in the lda okay and how to apply that 
and i think this example is much clear simply what we have discussed in the case of pca same thing find mean find covariance find sw find sb take the this particular expression find out the eigen values find out the eigen vectors then multiply the eigen vectors with the original data to get this particular vector that's it okay now what is this w star and what this expression is as inverse of within the within class scatter matrix into mu1 minus mu2 so this is what we got here right because this w star is what optimal weight vector optimal weight vector you can expect the question from this also find out the value of optimal weight vector so you need to do this particular process but if they ask the question based on this they will give you 2d data only in the case of three dimensional it will be very difficult to do the calculation and in the gate exam uh, it is not possible to do the calculation for three dimensional so they will give the data like this x1 x2 for 2d and you need to convert it to 1d okay so try to find out sb sw or what is optimal weight vector okay so this thing you can expect in the gate exam now what is this optimal weight vectors now this is deals with the features linear discriminant analysis so whatever we have discussed that is uh so this is basically a general process i can say lda but what this features has says so this is what we are going to discuss in the next video okay but i hope you understand the steps involved in the case of lda so remember uh, this important steps okay and this particular example so that's it from this particular video in the next video we are going to discuss about the features LDA. The same thing, just a minute difference is there. So that is what we are going to discuss. Okay. So that's it from this particular video. Thank you.